that little voice jump. The second story of the day is about California and its individual mandate that's trying to come back, or it is back. I don't know how they pass it through, but Gavin Newsom, hours after he took a oath of office as governor of California, decided to say we're fighting Trump by pushing an individual mandate. We're pushing for single payer, universal health care, and in order to fund all of that, they need an individual mandate. An individual mandate, I've explained it many times. I have better videos. Check my videos on Facebook or YouTube about Obamacare. But an individual mandate means that they force me to buy health insurance. I don't want to buy health insurance. Next year in California, I would literally not buy health insurance. I would save four or $5,000 because if I'm forced to buy health insurance, it's going to cost me two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. I'm going to get nothing for it. It's like giving the government my money to get nothing in return. I'm going to get nothing, nothing, literally nothing in return. It's happened four years. It's going to happen the fifth year. I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't want it. I want to take that money and I want to take care of my health. I want to buy things. I want to buy tea. I want to take a week off and relax, fix my back. My health insurance doesn't pay for my back. I don't want to pay for health insurance. I was very, very excited that Trump overturned the individual mandate. So Gavin Newsom says he wants an individual mandate, but what's worse about it is he doesn't want the individual mandate for the poor. He doesn't want the individual mandate for the homeless. He wants the individual mandate so illegal immigrants who are here illegally can get health insurance and access to health care. So they're going to steal my money. They're going to rob millions of Hispanic families, millions of black families, millions of white and all multiracial families in, in California. All these people they claim to care about. They're going to force them to fork over the money so that illegal immigrants can have health insurance. And this is the escalation of it. Like I said, I never cared about the wall. Illegal immigrants don't bother me. I have friends. I've worked with people who are illegal immigrants. I'm, it's not the biggest scoop to me. It never was. But now I see how the Democrats work. And now it is a big deal to me because they're stealing my money to give them a product that I don't even have, that I can't even afford. There's families that literally can't get health access and, and their health insurance doesn't do anything. They're getting their money robbed to give to illegal immigrants. This is what they did with the LGBT community. First, it was, we're going to legalize gay marriage. Sure, who cares? Go ahead. You, you might piss off some Christians, but whatever. Then it's like, okay, we're going to do this, this, this. We're going to ruin your life. You can't do this. You can't do It's like, okay, are, are you legalizing gay marriage or are you legalizing communism and fascism and you're pushing it behind the LGBT community? Because I was okay with gay marriage. Now I'm not okay with all this stuff because I see what you're doing. Same with illegal immigrants. It's one thing to support illegal immigration in this country and support the illegal immigrants who are there. I get that. I understand logically DACA, I get it. There's kids, there's a lot of good, I know, you know, DACA recipients or young illegals who are good people. They're like, you know, watching someone's kids. Of course, that's what the liberals want. They want people to do their work for them for cheaper. So they're like, oh, keep them, keep them there so we have cheaper labor. It's like, oh yeah, that makes you such a nice person that you wanna keep cheap labor here. That's like their justification of it. It's like, what are you, what is this, 1960s? You want cheaper work? Anyway, it's not just that they do that. Then they say, okay, well, actually, we're going to steal your money, Anomaly, and we're going to give them health insurance. Okay, let's, let's slow our road a little bit. But then they go even further on Facebook. A lot of people on my page, and, and watch what you say. I mean, don't censor yourself, but be, be very smart because they're on the go. The number one thing people come to me and tell me that they're getting censored and banned for, my friends included and people who follow my page, you get banned now on social media for speaking about illegal immigrants because they consider it hate speech. So if you say, hey, illegal immigrants are illegal, I mean, it's just literally what they are. They're not legal. There's, it's, it's wording. I'm, I'm not saying they're any less human, but the word illegal means illegal. The word legal means legal. The word legal citizen means legal citizen. The word illegal alien means someone who's here illegally from a foreign country. These are dictionary terms. I'm not making this stuff up. So when they conflate and they say all immigrants are illegal immigrants and you're like, no, they're not. Like that's, those, those aren't our terms. They're changing the dictionary to fit their communist creepy agenda of stealing my money and giving it to other people. So not only do they do that, but if you speak out against it now, we're turning into Europe and Canada very quickly. So they're going to steal my money and your money to give to illegal immigrants for health care. But if you speak out against it, now it's hate speech on, on social media. So they're going to ban you for 30 days. So think about what the communists are doing. The socialists, the, the progressives, the 
Democrats from the Bernie Sanders to the Gavin Newsoms to the Nancy Pelosi's to the Alexandria Ocasio communists. Here's what they're doing. They're stealing your money. They're raising your taxes. They're literally making it so you can't opt out of these total global scams and total nationwide scams of giving your money to the federal government and buying programs that you wouldn't and plans that you wouldn't buy under your free will. They're forcing you to do that. They're stealing your money. They're robbing you. And then if you speak out against it, they're going to say, oh, that's racist, sexist, xenophobic. We got to ban them off Facebook and they don't stand up for you. This is way past the point of no return. This is way past the point of, of doing something about. I do everything peacefully. I'm calm. I'm going to enjoy my life. Yeah, it's going to be a couple thousand dollars that they steal from me on top of the other thousands of dollars that they steal from me. But at a certain point, it's going to be too far. And it's getting to that point where it almost is too far, uh, where we have too many taxes. Everybody knows that. Even the left knows it. They're just so brainwashed into this false foolishness that they, they, they don't understand it. But you're talking about our forefathers when it was the 1700s, 1800s, whatever. They had a, a rebellion over tea tax. You know, we're getting taxed on tea and there's too many taxes. We have property tax. You don't own property in America. If you own property, the government basically owns it for two reasons. One, if they decide to build a highway or some sort of facility that they want there, they could pretty much kick you out and buy your house out whether you like it or not. It's happened many times. Oh, I don't want to sell my property. Well, guess what? Get out of the way or we're going to knock your house over. It happened to Native Americans, progressives know, and Standing Rock. Get out of the way. We're building the pipeline. It happens to conservatives too. Get off the farm. We're building the highway there. Get out of the way. Also, you don't own it. If you own something, you don't pay money on it. You don't own your property no matter how much you own it because you pay property taxes. You pay income taxes. Every time you make money, the government takes 20%, 30%, 40%, 15% if you're lucky. They steal your money with property tax, income tax, carbon gas tax now. In California, it's not bad enough that you're paying $1.50 more than the rest of the nation because California politicians are communists. That's not the big scoop. So they have to do a gas tax. So you're getting taxed on gas. They're talking about a text message tax. They have a video game tax in, a, in Cal um, Chicago. It's called an amusement tax. So you're now being taxed on your amusement. Are you having fun? Oh, I'm glad you're having fun because that costs 10% to the dollar. So better enjoy it because you're being stolen money while you do it. They're taxing everything. I think any sane, rational person would understand in this country, we don't need more taxes. We need less taxes. We don't need more individual mandates and more government coming into our lives and telling us we have to buy something or they're going to steal $10,000 from us. We don't need that. Imagine if they, they oh, you want to, you want everyone to eat? Yeah, of course. I don't want people to starve. Well, we're going to do universal food. Everyone's going to eat from this restaurant, one restaurant only, $10,000 a year. And if you don't pay for it, we're going to take $8,000. So do you want the $10,000 or the $8,000? I, I, I don't know. This, is, this doesn't sound very freedom. Oh, well, no, you hate people eating. Don't you want everyone to eat? Yes, but I don't want a singular restaurant controlling the... That's not freedom. That's not prosperous. That's not progression. And the fact that progressive socialist communist fools, oh, we're so woke. I, I love you guys, but I get it. You understand the Iraq war was a failure. I get it. You understand the Syria war was a failure. And you know that the Obama administration was responsible for slavery in Libya. Like, I get it. You're woke about that stuff. But you're not woke if you want to steal my money and steal everybody's money and make a singular health plan that's run by the federal government. That's what communist regimes do because there's no freedom involved. Doc you think doctors are going to like that? I'm, I have doctor friends. They're pissed because now... It's not going to help their 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 uh you know their, their practice whatsoever and and it's absolutely insane. I don't even want to get into that aspect of it, but we don't need more taxes. We don't need any more individual mandates. And the fact that the California governor, the first thing that he does is try to steal my money and steal your money and steal everyone's money, not to give it to the homeless. We have top three homeless in in the United States. I mean, go to San Francisco. There's people crapping on the streets. There's there's uh heroin addicts everywhere. I mean, literally, I'm not even going to get into this now, but homelessness in, in Los Angeles, it's not because everyone needs a job. Nobody needs a job. Either they're cracked out on cocaine and heroin, they're doing meth, uh, they're super, super lazy and just the scum of the earth, 
or they have mental health issues and caught a bad break and they need help. But most of these people, they're, they don't need help. I, I'm, I'm driving somewhere the other day and there's a guy that's doing meth, like he's literally methed out, but he has super white teeth and he looks like he could be in a Colgate commercial. Like the kid looks like a model, but he's just doing heroin on the street. I, I have friends that are like, dude, my cousin could live at home. He just lives on the street because it's easy. He gets $600 from Gavin Newsom a month does meth with his friends and eventually he's gonna probably kill himself. But it, it's not because everyone needs a job. The economy's not that bad yet, but it will get that bad. I see my neighborhood going to crap. The homelessness is up because they incentivize homelessness. Illegal immigration is gonna be up because they incentivize breaking the law. They don't want you to start a small business. It's hard to start a small business, but it's easy to do meth on the street. You could literally, I saw some guy the other day, grab the trash can, take a bite of it, and throw it out into the street. He's just trashing the street. I guess that's okay. Uh, there were reports of downtown Los Angeles. They had people use uh, homeless people to do some sort of voting scheme. Guess what happened? All the people who schemed it up, they got arrested. The homeless people didn't get charged. So what does that tell you? If you're homeless, you have more rights than a citizen. You can commit a crime when you're homeless, but because you're homeless, it's not a crime? Sanctuary city. Well, they're illegal, so they can commit crimes, but we won't, we won't cooperate with federal law enforcement because if you're a Hispanic citizen, that's a crime. If you're illegal, you get free health care. There's no laws. I mean, I, you know who's the most pissed about this stuff besides me right now? Hispanics in America. I mean, I, I know a lot of people that you think that there's not 52 million Hispanics in America who are legal citizens paying taxes, if they commit a crime or do something, they get separated from their family or they get sent to, to jail or they have a fine. So why in the world do you think 52 million Hispanics want illegal immigrants to come here and steal their money? Nobody wants that. That's what they're doing in California. This is socialism, this is communism. And I have to say, it's all peace, love, positivity, of course, always nonviolence and always love. I, I preach to my audience, stay calm, never do anything harmful, but Protect yourself. That's what the First and Second Amendment are there for. And don't budge an inch. I mean, these are socialists and communists coming to steal your money. I don't, I don't know any other way to put it. I could be nice about it. I have dozens of videos sugarcoating it, but this is the raw truth. This is what communists and socialists do. They blab their big mouths on all over CNN and, 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 and MSNBC and all the liberal news organizations. They use the celebrities. They say, ah, nah, nah. race, religion, gender. I'm so not racist. And then when the cameras are off and when their big blabbery mouths stop talking, they come for your pockets. They come for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% of your paycheck. They come for, oh, no, 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 no. You have to buy this. I don't... Do I have to go to Best Buy and buy a TV? Of course not. It's under my free will. I could buy something or I don't. Health insurance is no different. I shouldn't be forced to buy it. People say, anomaly car insurance is the same. No, it's not. I don't drive. I save thousands of dollars a year because I don't drive. And I love it, honestly. Everyone's stressed out driving all the time. I save a lot of money because I don't drive. So it's not the same. I don't drive. I don't pay car insurance. And I like not paying car insurance. I don't want to pay car insurance. If I move somewhere where I feel the need to drive, which eventually will happen, then I'll pay car insurance. But guess what I've done in the process? I've saved $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, and I'm able to use it on other things that I choose to do. Because you're not me, little socialist communist kids. I'm sorry. I get it. You're foolish. You're naive. You're weak. You're a dummy who thinks that giving your money to the federal government is virtuous. You can do that on your own free will. If you want to go down to Gavin Newsom's house and hand over $10,000 because you're a little communist, you do that. But you don't decide what I do. You don't get to come to my house and you don't get to come into my life and say, no, 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 no. We want to give, we want to give health care to the illegals. So Anomaly, give me $7,000. No, why don't you take your money and you give it to them? You're not taking my money. I'm not giving up my money. I'll, I'll leave the state before I, I, I pay this individual mandate. It's absolutely sickening. It's absolutely ridiculous. It was ridiculous with Obamacare, let alone that was at least for a good cause for Americans, not really. They're stealing citizens' money mandatorily and saying, if you don't pay, we're gonna take it anyway to give to people who aren't citizens there. This is how you start a revolution. This is how you create a civil war. I'm not saying I want it. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm not stoking the fire. I say peace, love, and positivity, but I'm saying to the left, what do you think's gonna happen, morons? Like, what, what, what's your end goal? I don't understand, what's your end goal? 
And if you read into their actual end goal and you get into the minds of these people, a lot of them are not really as virtuous as they claim to be. And that's why I say this stuff. I'm not trying to be mean, but I've had conversations with people and I know their end goal is not to give everyone health care and to have everyone living a happy, free society. Some of them, them are, but they're, they're foolish. A lot of them, their end goal is to see everything melt and get destroyed. And I know, I know bad people. I'm not saying they're bad, but they don't take care of themselves. And instead of living the American dream like they can and racing to the top like I'm doing, I came from nothing. My grandparents worked in factories and I'm making a decent living for myself and living my dream because I work hard and I work smart and I've sacrificed seven years. That's the American dream. They don't want to do that. They don't have the ambition that I have. They don't have the drive that I have. They don't have the passion that I have. They're not, you know, they're weak-minded or they gave up even though they have richer parents than I do. It's not like they're oppressed. Half the kids who push this stuff have multi-million dollar parents. They're just little babies who don't know how to work hard for themselves. They don't want everyone to rise. They lie and when the cameras are off and when they start huffing drugs, I'm not saying everyone, but they start to admit the truth to me and misery loves company. A lot of these people don't want everyone to go to the top. They want to drag everyone down so everyone's equally as weak and broke and miserable as they are. And I've had people admit this to my face. I've literally talked to people who are, I hate Trump, I hate Democrats. And then I have a conversation, they say, well, we deserve to be enslaved because we did a lot of enslaving. So I'm like, let me get this straight, my man. You're a Democrat. You're virtuous, you wanna help all people, but you want Americans literally to be in slavery because you feel bad about what your ancestors did and not mine. And they're like, yes, that's how I feel. I've had people say to me, ooh, blah, 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 Trump's so bad, they have a few beers, and then all of a sudden they're screaming the N-word like they hate black people. And I'm like, I, I, you were just a Democrat five minutes ago. What, now you hate black, like, I'm, I'm not lying. I've, I have some good progressive friends too who are just naive or foolish or weak and good people, but I, I know a lot of these people, it's like 30% people who are foolish and think they're doing a good job, 30% people who are not good people who literally wanna tank everybody to see the whole world burn, they think it'll be funny, or they, they, don't, they don't care about themselves, so why would they care about everyone else? That's why I always say change yourself to change the world. If you don't love yourself, how are you gonna love your country? If you can't even you know respect yourself, how are you gonna respect 300 million American citizens. They don't respect people. They just hide their insecurities and hide their flaws and hide their weaknesses and hide their problems and scapegoat it. And President Trump is the big bullseye to scapegoat. So I know people who for years they've had problems. They blame their ex-boyfriend. They blame this person. They blame this person. Trump comes around. All of a sudden they're watching Rachel Maddow and they're blaming Trump for five years. It's not because Trump is the bad big deal. It's because he's the easy thing to scapegoat all your problems on. And it, it, it's an easy way to make it feel like you're a good person. If I didn't like President Trump, I would know that hating him doesn't make me a good person. Just like I don't, I don't think telling the truth about progressives and liberals, I don't think that makes me a great person. I think it does uh, make me helpful that I try to educate people, but I'm most proud of who I am when the cameras are off. I'm most proud of who I am in person, who I am when, when there's no financial or uh, you know social incentive to be a good person. That's what I'm most proud of, who I really am. And a lot of people, they're not those people. So they have to act like they're some sort of virtuous people to feel good about themselves. But low key, probably like depressed at night or something. I'm not, I don't wanna get too into it, but what I'm saying is, you're not taking my money. You could steal money, you could turn California into a crap hole, you could ruin the lives of millions of Hispanic and black and white and all sorts of families and you will reap the consequences. And I'm not wishing for it to happen, I'm saying this as a warning call, just like I say to conservatives. I say stop promoting all these socialist communist kids that you don't like. I don't say that to be mean, I say it because they're gonna win eventually. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying we're, we're for sure going to do well the next election. I'm like, I'm looking at conservative leadership and I'm not very impressed. Outside of Trump, there's not a lot of winners out there. And I'm, there's, there's some good people for sure, but we got to do better. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm hard on myself. I'm hard on my friends. I'm hard on my side. Do better. And that's what I say to the left. Like, you're do way better. I don't know what you're even doing anymore. At least conservatives, they mean well, they have bad strategy, they're doing some weird stuff sometimes and a lot of them have problems too. I'm not I'm not blaming just liberals, but like the left, like what are you even doing? Best comes to best on the left. 
you're gonna start a civil war. Best comes to best, you, you get your agenda, you're gonna leave millions of people into poverty and you're gonna see Los Angeles and San Francisco turn into Paris and Belgium and the UK, which is not thriving off healthcare. It's a global cabal trying to take over all of Europe, just like Hitler and Stalin did. I mean, this is stuff that didn't happen 10,000 years ago. I keep bringing it up. Not to say they're them or Trump's them like they do. I'm saying this happened within 150 years, so it could happen again. Yes, it could happen through Trump. It could happen. It's something to consider, but let's take a look at Europe. What's happening? They don't control themselves. You have the UN Migration Pact and this, this weird, creepy global cabal trying to control all of Europe. The same people who are telling us to get in that global cabal are telling Mexico to come in. The same people who are trying to get us in that global cabal who are letting Mexico in also let people in Syria and Libya. And when they let people in Syria and Libya, extremist terrorists took over. So regardless of what CBS fact check says, here's anomaly fact check. The same people who are trying to take over Europe, who are telling Mexico to come in and Guatemala and Honduras to come in illegally, break the law, they're literally telling them to break the law. These same people are the same ones who destroyed Libya. These same people, the same news sources, the same politicians, these same celebrities and vice newses, they're the same ones who celebrated when Libya's uh, leader got killed. And they're the same ones who didn't say anything when slave trade and organ harvesting came in the way. So it's not a coincidence. It's not like a, oh, well, maybe it's literally happening. So they're coming for the First Amendment. They're coming for the Second Amendment. They're trying to take over Europe. They're trying to stop your ability to speak out about it. They're literally trying to take your money in California, give it to illegal immigrants, while they censor you on social media and say, no, 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 don't, don't talk out about it. Just give us your money and you're not allowed to have an opinion about it because us stealing your money is none of your business. You're not, you can't, it's hateful to want to keep your money. It's hateful to be honest and true and, and fair and, and not want to get knocked into poverty. That's hateful. But it's not hateful when we delete a fact check on CBS and uh, don't tell you that 60 to 80% of women are getting raped. That's not hateful. No, 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 no. It's hateful when you try to stop uh, communism and a global takeover from hitting the United States. It's so much deeper than Trump. It's so much deeper than California. But it looks like my state wants to be the Europe of America. It looks like we want to test the waters and see what happens with unfettered illegal immigration, with communist socialist policies from hate speech laws to the abolishment of the Second Amendment. They're coming for that stronger. This, it's so simple. I, I don't understand how even the most far left person can't figure this out. The far left doesn't like the government. The far left is anti-government. How could you be anti-government and want to give your money to the government, want to give up your First Amendment right to the government and these little extremist groups that are beating people up, give your rights away, your Second Amendment right to protect yourself against the government or against any sort of in anyone, anybody, the First and Second Amendment, you're giving that up. You're giving the First Amendment up. You're giving the Second Amendment up. You're allowing all of this stuff to happen. You're allowing them to take 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% of your paycheck. How do you not get, it's so goofy to me. I, I don't understand and I'm, I'm gonna stick to this uh, at the end of the day. I understand that some people are confused. I understand that some people think differently and they have a different angle. But at this point, with everything I just laid out and I'm, I'm once again, just to be clear, Make America Debate Again, that's my podcast, Make America Debate Again. F please, some top progressive or, or, or liberal or socialist, Please come on my platform because I'm trying to figure out what the heck you're thinking. I have people on my platform and they, they acknowledge half this stuff. They just don't care. So I, I, I want to have these debates. I, I want to figure out where you're coming from. But the deeper I get into it, I'm starting to learn people know they just don't care. It's like misery loved company. Yeah, we know, but we, we deserve it. It's like, dude, this is not, this is not funny anymore. Look, I have to be honest before I leave. Luckily, and nothing I do is guaranteed. I could get deleted off Facebook or Twitter tomorrow and lose all my money and be homeless. But as of now, I'm doing okay. You know what I'm saying? I've worked for eight years pretty hard. So if I have to pay the individual mandate or communism comes, I'll probably be able to survive it because I'm doing exceptionally well uh, for my age because I've worked very hard for now. Like I said, tomorrow I could be deleted and lose everything. But there's millions of families who can't afford it. I talk to Lyft and Uber drivers all the time. They're stressed out 
because it's not working in California for the working class person. It's not working for the family or the small business owner or the people working 15 or $20 an hour either. It's not working for anyone. I might be able to get away for it, but I'm not gonna shut up because there's millions of families who can't. They're not, it's not, it's, it's a matter of dollars. Nancy Pelosi, oh, it's just a, th a couple thousand dollars they saved. That's, are you kidding me? A couple thousand dollars at a certain point would change my life. I could go on vacation, I could take a break, I could buy a new laptop, like that's life-changing money when you're broke and they're laughing at that stuff, like that's, they steal that money every step of the way, whether it's taxes, gas tax, federal income tax, this tax, that tax, property tax, individual mandate healthcare tax, it's getting insane and, and it's not gonna go well, one way or the other, like that's what I'm trying to explain before I really leave there's multiple options that can happen. Either Trump and conservatives win and we maintain somewhat law and order in our country and like, you know, basically basic elements of the constitution that even we're so liberal now, we're not even conservative. It's not like we have a bunch of Christian, uh, like extremist Christians running where you can't do anything. We're so far liberal. You literally have like 12 year olds running around naked with like creepy liberal gay dudes like, oh no, I'm gay. It's like, no, the, the big scoop is not you're gay. We don't care. The big scoop is you're running around with like t naked 12 year olds. Just because you're gay doesn't mean you could sexualize 12 year olds. The point I'm making is we're not really conservative anymore. We're so far liberal. Honestly, it's disgusting. And uh, you know, we're trying to hold that together. So either that happens Democrats and progressive socialists lose and we maintain somewhat order or they win and everything gets screwed up. I mean, do you really want to not listen to me and watch it all happen? But they're so brainwashed, it'll probably happen. And they'll, they'll probably be like, duh, we don't even, they probably won't even notice or care. But there's no winning. There's no, there's no winning. Trump was preventing a civil war, really hard, uh, you know, backlash in this country in the UK, Brexit is holding that on a thread. Look everywhere in the world, in, in Canada, in Ontario, Canada, and in uh, Quebec, Canada, you had a conservative win when Trudeau's gun, I guarantee, or Trudeau, whatever, I don't even pronounce his, right, his name right, he's not worth it, but they had a big conservative win. The Liberal Party got crushed for the first time in 151 years. They lost party status. This is the revolution. It's happening in Canada. It happened in Brazil. Trump is the revolution here. It's happening in France. I mean, France is getting crazy, man. There, there, there's hundreds of thousands of people hitting the streets in, in yellow vests. In Belgium, they made the prime minister. The only thing hanging uh, UK on a thread and Germany on a thread as they beat the crap out of right-wing politicians there because they're extremists now and it's, it's being overrun in Germany. The only thing hanging onto his thread is the fact that they're pretending like Brexit's gonna happen. The only thing holding us on the thread is the fact that Trump won. He won for a reason. It's not because they rigged the election. It's because hundreds of millions of people are pissed off and we're not gonna get any less pissed off when you keep doing crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier stuff and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and stealing and stealing and stealing. No, 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 I'm gay. No, no, I can't, I can't be a communist. I'm a, I'm a liberal. I love black people and Hispanics. So do we all, but it doesn't make you any less communist. You can't keep pushing and wonder what happens. Trump is the thread that's holding our society in every way, shape, and form. I didn't even know how bad it was until I watched how everyone react during Trump. It's like Trump is holding our whole society together by a thread. You try to remove him, impeach-wise, pass a, a socialist communist through with bug out crackhead eyes. They're like, oh, we're gonna save 70% taxes. It's like, calm down. If she comes to my door, you know, I'm gonna call the feds on her. Like, I, she's a psychopath. It's like these people aren't, you could see it in their eyes. Like. You look at in my eyes or you look at someone else's eyes, not, not I'm not saying judge people, but like you could tell a lot about people by their eyes. You look at Nancy Pelosi or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's eyes, it looks like she murdered 10,000 people before the interview. These people are bona fide psychopaths. It's very obvious. If they get into power, if conservatives keep dropping the ball or they cheat and rig the election, you're gonna see a revolution in this country. And I'm not saying that to stoke it or promote it. I'm condemning it. I tell people to calm down, I'm probably the most peaceful person. I'm just also, not to like make a claim, but like I'm, I philosophize. I'm, I'm not like a well-known philosopher or anything, but I'm 
you know, there's things that I predicted years ahead. I'm, I'm not saying that it's, I get things wrong sometimes too. I'm not trying to like act like I'm that great. But what I'm saying is I've, I predicted a lot of these things years ago, five, three, two, one. So I'm just, it's a warning. It's like a stop, relax. If I was liberal and I, and they were like, Hey, anomaly, should we, should we pass communism and hide it behind LGBT? Should we hate white people? Should we hate men? Should we treat the people with hundreds of millions of guns like crap anomaly? Should, should we forcefully push an evil agenda and treat all the people with guns like crap? I would be like, no, absolutely not. Even if I was liberal, I would never treat people like that. I don't treat anyone like that. I don't treat people like that in person. I don't treat people like that on live stream. I'll make a joke here or there, but the way that they treat conservatives and gun owners uh, in this country, the, I mean, you literally have uh, Michael Ian Black and these loser uh, celebrities calling them terrorists, even though they've never committed a crime, for literally protecting their country. It's like, sorry, buddy, you're not the guy everyone's going to go to when everything goes to shit. No one's going to run to your house. It's going to be all your friends with guns. Point I'm saying is I would never treat anyone like that let alone how they're treating the conservatives, the smart, strong people with all the guns and, and ammunition, and you're trying to start a civil war as you're punching, 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 poking those people. It's like, no, I would say don't do, I'm trying to prevent this from happening, but no one's listening to me. They're like, oh, we have a good idea, Anomaly. Not only will we not listen to a word you said the last two years, will we continuously treat people like crap and be more racist and sexist, but now we're gonna steal California's money and give it to illegal immigrants. What do you think about that? I'm like, no. Stop, I told you to stop five years ago, stop. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't help anybody. You're not helping the poor. You're not helping the middle class. You're not helping Hispanics. You're not helping blacks or Asian or women. You're not helping any of these oppressed communities that you think you're helping. You're not helping any, you're screwing everything up royally past the point of no return. So this is my final warning in the most peaceful, calm, serene, honest, sincere, genuine way possible. Relax and think about what you're doing unless you really want to go there. I, I don't, I don't want to go there. I enjoy the fact that I could sit and order Uber Eats or you know what I'm saying and jog and you know enjoy my day like it's not that bad. I, I love California. Uh, the people here are great. It's not that bad yet but you could tell it's getting worse pretty much everywhere I've seen. It's getting trashier. There's graffiti on all the walls. It wasn't. There's businesses getting closed down, there's more homelessness, there's more trash everywhere. It's going to crap. I mean, anybody in Los Angeles or, or San Francisco could see that. It's not terrible. I mean, I'm sure it's been worse at certain points, but I've been here for five years. I've been in the, in the area that I'm in now for three or four years, and I know for a fact it's not getting better. I can tell it's significantly gotten worse since I've been here uh, by a long shot. It, from graffiti to trash to homelessness to uh, businesses being closed down, there's less businesses, there's less, there's maybe a few huge apartment complexes that have gone up, but besides that, it's going to shit. And if you go further left, it's gonna go further to shit. I guarantee it. So I'm just warning to be nice. I'm not trying to be mean or hateful or some negative Nancy could be like, oh, he's stoked. No, I'm not stoking the division. I'm desperately calling, desperately calling for you to have a conversation with me. I'll, t I'll, I'll, I'll take it for everyone else. I'll take, all the, I'll take all the abuse that they're gonna give me. I'll go on CNN, I'll go on NBC, MSNBC, I'll talk to Ellen, I'll talk to Jimmy Kimmel, I'll talk to these, these people. Have a conversation with me so I can tell you the story about the Pakistani immigrant who spent five to 10 years to get here and his family can't come over because you're prioritizing illegal immigrants and unqualified immigrants over merit-based programs. I'll tell you the story about people, about women of minority ethnicity that love the Second Amendment because they're victims of abuse and now they're able to protect themselves. I'll tell you these stories. You don't wanna hear these stories. They don't, they don't wanna bring me on because they, they lie, 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 lie use women and children, ignore rape and all these other creepy statistics so they can push a total agenda of global control, extremely high taxes that are gonna tank everyone into poverty and high taxes means it goes to the government. Everyone knows this stuff. Like why do I even have to be here saying this? Does the government work well? Ask a far left communist. No, they don't work well. Ask a far right wing conservative. Does the government do really great work all the time? Everyone will tell you no. I could probably poll America and get 95% of people to say no. 
And then I'd ask the question, so do you think it's a good idea to give 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% of your money to the government? Uh, yeah, because uh, we want health care for the, everybody. Yeah, the, you, how stupid are you? Now you're digging into my pockets to give it for people who aren't even citizens of this country? You've got to be fucking kidding me. I'm, so, I'm sorry for cursing, but it's, it's absolutely past the point of no return. It's so insane that we even have to talk about this. Yeah, but if we steal everyone's money, the government's going to make a singular plan that makes everybody's health really good all of a sudden because it's not like they've lied about everything ever. And then, but if we give them our money and we cut out the competition, duh, then duh, with, the, with the government with no competition, if they own everything duh, and have all our money, then duh, it's going to be a communist uh, society of utopia. I mean, get the fuck out of here. How stupid could you possibly be? And it's past the point of no return because now you're stealing my money. That's where the buck ends for me. I'm very chill. I like to have fun sometimes. I very rarely curse, but you steal my money. You steal my freedom. It doesn't work out well. I'm sorry. It's just not going to work out well for you. So those are the two stories of the day. Have a good day. Uh, enjoy yourself. Enjoy the last couple of years of normal American freedom if socialists and communists take over. And this is my warning to conservatives, too. Stop sucking so much. And I'm not, I'm not saying you specifically, but people on, oh, we hate her, but we're going to promote her on Twitter all day. Stop. I'm, I'm unfollowing and blocking. I blocked and unfollowed like 20 people today because they were like, we hate this girl, but all they do is promote her. That's what got Trump elected. That philosophy and psychology works 0% of the time. And conservatives are like, what if we just made the same mistakes as Democrats and gave our country away to communism and then complained about it? It's like, let's not. Let's not do that, conservatives. So stop doing that. And uh, to everybody, enjoy. Because at this rate, you know, it's not looking good. But overall, you know, and on a positive note, after I got my little vent out of there, it's a beautiful time to be alive. I'm trying to conserve what is really great. I love California. I love Los Angeles. San Francisco, I loved the last time I went. It's probably not that great anymore, but I'm sure there's nice parts of San Francisco too. Um, you know, I love this country. I'm very, very grateful. Even if it gets terrible, yeah, you know, it probably won't be too, too bad at a, until a certain point, but why? Why go backwards? Why, you know, that's what I'm trying to conserve. And, and sometimes I'm very calm. Sometimes people like when I get energized, today's a different stream. If you want calm, calm anomaly, then you know I got thousands of videos at this point. You can watch the other one, but you know, money and freedom is, is no joke. And uh, I don't understand why no one understands <laughs> that this all this stuff that we enjoy and appreciate now is, is not guaranteed. So uh, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. I see a lot of progress. Hopefully this, this, this live stream wakes up even one person or two people or three people to consider the fact that this path that we're going on is, is so not good. And I, I can't tell anymore if people are purposely lying and they actually know it's terrible or if people really uh, believe in it. But I'm passionate, not just for myself, but you, like you don't understand how many families this, this is negatively going to affect. And I, I want to end on this note. Like I said, I have Make America Debate Again platform. The reason I go so hard now too is it's not like we have a 50-50 representation. It's not like we have 50% of celebrities debating these facts against 50% of celebrities. We have nobody. We have like 99% one direction, 0.5% one direction. And anytime we try to pop up, they knock us down and censor us and say racist, sexist, xenophobic before we get to have a conversation. I guarantee you I could destroy any of them in a debate. And I'm not saying it to brag, I'm saying it as a challenge. If you don't think so, somebody debate me. And I'll work very hard to get these, these liberal debates, but it's like, people deserve to see that. They deserve to see everything I'm saying here. My audience needs to see this question. Why would I just tell people one thing and say, don't hear the other side? That's what a lot of liars do. People deserve to hear that on my channel and liberals and progressives and all of these people that are being brainwashed in academia with mass media and celebrities, they need to hear my perspective because it's very, very real. And there's hundreds of millions of people who are being smoked out in silence. Uh, but the beautiful part is we're, we're making gains. Um, I'm just a little annoyed. Probably 90% of my live stream isn't even from California. They don't care, but I do. And I, I know enough families and good people uh, who do care as well. 
So I'm making a statement. That That's it. Appreciate you guys. God bless you. Uh, God bless your family. God bless America. God bless California. And God bless the world. I just want to end on this note because the media always tries to frame everything out of proportion and I'm just protecting myself even though they don't care about me now. Everything nonviolent is all love. Uh, I say protect yourself. Just like that's basic standard. Anybody, anywhere, like anytime you're out, out, keep your eyes peeled. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't talk to strangers, like basic stuff. But it's all love. It's all nonviolent. I'm not calling for any of this stuff I'm talking about. I'm just saying it's inevitable unless people wake up on the other side and stop pushing so hard. It's like someone with a hammer who's smashing on a wall and just smashing the wall. And I'm like, yo, stop smashing the wall. The wall's going to break through. And then I say that and they're like, oh, Anomaly's trying to start a civil war. No, I'm not. I'm trying to prevent one. I'm trying to stop what's going to happen from happening. I'm not trying to start it. I've literally spent hundreds of hours, much more, trying to stop it on both sides. I, I calm conservatives down all the time. I calm liberal. I bring people closer together. I've, I've had hundreds of thousands of people uh, do so. This is true. So, it's, you know, it's a, a spicy stream. I'm a spicy tamale today. Uh, appreciate you guys. God bless you. God bless your family again. We'll do a lot of prayers today. And uh, thank you guys for supporting. If you don't do anything, sign up to my free email list. I barely use it. Um, sign up so I have your email just in case something bad happens on, uh, on social media. Check out my YouTube channel. Uh, check out my last video. And then also check out my interview with Andrew Clavin. It's one of my favorite it is my favorite video uh, ever. So go show Andrew Clavin some love. Say Anomaly sent you. He's a great guy. Thank you to him and the people at The Daily Wire for uh, having me on. That was great. And then uh, I'll post these on YouTube as well. And thank you to everybody on DonorBox and uh, Patreon for supporting. I appreciate that tremendously. And um, I'm working on a lot of things. I'm trying to make a lot of stuff happen and get good discussion out there. The change is happening on a positive note. Life is good. It's all it's all love. I, I, I hate to be that spicy, uh, but you know, I, I think when, when people push really hard, it's like I'm desperately trying to stop what's happening in France from happening here. I don't want hundreds of thousands of people in the streets burning things. Like I, no one wants that. I don't, I don't want that. And it's probably not gonna be conservatives burning stuff to be honest, it's probably gonna be leftists just to be real. But I don't want that to happen. So I'm desperately praying that people come to their senses. It's like somebody just like bashing their head against a wall. And I'm like, dude, you're hurting yourself. Why are you hurting your, don't stop me. No, I'm, I'm stop, you're gonna hurt yourself. Like it, it's, it's past the point. Of course, opioid, uh, opioid deaths and suicides are up. Why wouldn't they be? Look at the news. Look at what social media is pushing. Look at celebrities. Look at, look at rap culture. Why, why wouldn't su su suicides and opioids be up? Look at what they're promoting via border. Oh, we don't need security. Let's just let enough fentanyl to kill the whole nation in, but then we'll wonder why people are dying from fentanyl. It's because you make zero effort to stop it, and somebody who does, you say, no, you're a racist person for wanting to save lives. It's ridiculous. Man, I got to brush my hair. All right, have a good day, guys. I'll be out. I'll talk to you guys soon.